get you that bullying from her sister. Well, I know. That man will get her all banged up, and then what will happen? Who will look after it? Who will look after her? Her sister will chuck her out, that's what she'll do. Oh, you men are all alike. Don't you go with him, Lisa Better Ivanovna. He's dirty. Dirty-minded, you understand? I wouldn't let him. I'm not bad. He always wants to, but I... Leave him alone. Don't give him chance to play about. Believe me, he's not a nice man. He'll get you into trouble. But I wouldn't let him. He's very naughty. I wouldn't let him. Don't you go into his house. Oh, leave her alone. Then take advantage of her. Don't let him touch you, dear. You understand, some men, dirty minds and dirty hands. I won't. <laughs> I'm cutting off. <laughs> That's right. That's the idea. Skolnikov, a student. I came here before. Well, I'm here on the same errand. Well, my good sir. I brought you something to pawn. Oh, but the time is up for your last pledge, my good sir. I'll bring you the interest for another month, if you can wait. You come with such trifles, they're scarcely worth anything. Frankly, I gave you too much for that ring. Give me four rubles for it. It was my father's. I'll be getting some money from home soon, and then I'll be able to redeem the ring. A ruble and a half an interest in advance. 
A ruble and a half. Oh, as you please. Very well. Sir, since we say ten kopecks to the ruble of the month, you owe me fifteen kopecks for a ruble and a half a month in advance. And for the two rubles I lent you before, you owe me twenty kopecks, so that makes thirty-five. So I must give you one ruble fifteen for the watch. One ruble fifteen? Just so. <laughs> Where have you been? Gossiping? Only shopping. You're a liar. You stop at all the stalls and you gossip. I told you to come back at once. Dark yet, Alyona Ivanovna. Yes, well, I'll bring some money and redeem the ring in a few days. Very well, my good sir. <laughs> I'll have you put away. Mm -hmm. I can do that, you know, because you don't do as you're told. You don't. Why, do you want to? I may have to. Did you get any money from her? Of course. But I'd already borrowed on it. Too extravagant as your trouble. <laughs> Look who's talking. Who spent a whole month's allowance in a single night? Oh, uh, well. That's what to me. I've uh, reformed. Listen, there's an old woman. She lives in Tanner Yard. You can always get money from her. Everybody uses her. What's she like? Hideous. But she's as rich as a Jew. She'll give you 5,000 rubles if you want it. But you can also pawn something for five kopecks. Why is she hideous? <laughs> well, for one thing, if you're a day late with your interest, you lose the pledge. She also only gives a quarter of the value and charges five and seven percent a month. Well, that's certainly rough, all the same. It doesn't really make her hideous, does it? She has a half-witted sister who she beats. Treats her bombably. Well, a half-sister, really. Yeah. She's nearly six feet tall. <laughs> Why does she put up with it? She's got no money of her own, I suppose. And what could she do if she left? I sometimes wonder why God creates people like that. The old pawnbroker, I mean. You say it. <laughs> all the same. Where would we be without them, eh? Well, she doesn't have to be like that. Do you know she'd have to all her money to a monastery to say prayers for her when she's dead? She sounds as if she'll need all the prayers she can get. She left absolutely nothing to that half-sister of hers. Just a few sticks of furniture. I happen to know that. If the old woman was to drop dead tomorrow, the world would be no worse off. In fact, it would be a lot better off. I've sometimes thought of helping her on her way myself. What? Murder her, Alexei? Why not? <laughs> what a passionate fellow you are. I could do it and make off with her money like that. And you know, I wouldn't lose a night's sleep. Ah, uh, that's easy to say. I wouldn't. I mean, what is she? She's a louse crawling out of the woodwork. All right, let's be rational for a moment. On the one side, you have a, a rich, greedy, spiteful old woman. On the other side, fresh young lives thrown away for want of help every day. Well, that's life, isn't it? That's nature. A man doesn't always accept nature. Reason says kill her. Take her money and use it for the good of others. For one life, thousands would be saved. Why should God frown on that? God frowns on the deliberate taking of all life. What, what you're saying is that it's natural. It's part of nature that things like that are born. Yes. Even parasites. Yes. 
isn't it our task to correct and, and direct nature? <laughs> Would you do it? Would you kill her yourself? What business is out of yours? Your old talk, then. You chatter on about killing her in order to save thousands, then you begin to discuss the ethics of whether it be God's work or the devil's. I tell you, the truly great man would have no hesitation. None. He would act, squash her like a bug. Students. Hypothesis. By killing one man, you save the lives of two. Discuss. The truly great man would never discuss. Explain that. He can be responsible for the deaths of thousands and get away with it. Even be applauded for it. Oh, yeah, Caesar and Ivan the Terrible. Napoleon. That's what you have to explain. Discuss that. Why aren't you up? It's nine o'clock. How am I ever supposed to clean this room if you're never out of it? You can never clean it anyway. You never pay to have it clean. What are we arguing about? Oh, you're so clever. Why, if you're so clever? Do you lie there like a sack and have nothing to show for it? Tell me that. I'm ill. You're ill because you don't eat. You don't eat because you've got no money. You don't go to the university and you don't give lessons anymore. What's the point in giving lessons? All I get is a few coppers. What are you up here bothering me for? Go away! Go away, go away. I brought you a letter. That's why I'm here. A letter? Where? Here. It's from your mother. You even go to bed in your clothes? What a sad man you are. Oh, just give me the letter, please. I gave the postman three kopecks for it. Well, I'll pay you later. Oh, no, wait a minute. Some money here. Do you want some soup? I made some very good soup. It'll warm you and do you good. I'll bring you some soup. The mistress wants you out of this room. She's going to complain to the police about you. some soup and some sausage. Drink the soup. There. That's warming, isn't it? That does you good. Well, how are your mother and sister? Business is that of yours. Don't be so impertinent. Impertinent? Is it impertinent to ask after somebody's mother? I thought it was polite. 
What a funny man you are. It's bad news, eh? They're not ill. No, they're not ill. My sister has contracted a marriage for money and she does it for me. For me. She does it for me. Takes it upon herself to do it for me, but I don't ask her to do it for me. In fact, I forbid it. She must love you very much. I forbid it. Oh, there's no sense in this world. What sense should there be in it? You should go back to your studies. Your mind is overactive, I can tell. You're too clever and your mind hasn't anything to be clever with anymore. It's idle, so it gets clotted. You should go back to your books. No sense to it. He used to be in our class. Brilliant student. He doesn't come anymore. Rodya Raskolnikov. Well, he's run out of money, I expect. Are you all right? Can I be of any help? Leave her alone. I know what you want. I know what you are after. A disgusting, disgusting seducer of the poor. I forbid you to touch it. Do you understand me? I forbid it. Now, now, gentlemen. No fighting. Who are you? I'm glad you came, Constable. I'm a student, Raskolnikov. Look at her poor girl, she's hopelessly drunk. She's not a professional, you can tell. Someone's got her drunk and taken advantage of her. You can see that she's been dressed by somebody else. Someone like him who seeks to do it again. Oh, he looks very innocent standing there like that, but he's been following her, believe you me. Yeah, I can see that. No, oh, she's only a girl, a child. The question is, what can we do with her? Yeah. Take this. We'll find her a cab and take her home. Thank you, sir. The point is to find out where she lives. Missy? Missy, where do you live? Shame on you. Shame on you. Don't worry, sir. I shall see she's all right. Come on, Missy. Come on. to me. There's no sense in this world anyway. Hey, leave her alone. What's it got to do with you? Pardon, sir? Leave her alone. What difference does it make? Let him have her. What business is it of ours? Well, you don't rightly make much sense, sir. Oh, and what sense can you make of the world then, huh? Can you make a better sense of the world?
back so soon? Have you spent your money so quickly? What business is that of yours? Oh, none at all. But I thought perhaps you might have come to redeem instead of to pawn. <laughs> well, I haven't got the money at the moment. Do you want to advance something on that or not? Oh, but of course it's my business to advance. <laughs> well, will you make up your mind? Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, I'm not staring at you, sir. I was wondering what the locket was worth to me. But not to you, no doubt to you. It has a sentimental value. But that cannot be priced. Well, I'm in a hurry. A ruble and a half. Very well. Less usual interest in advance. Are you going out to come me? Enough. Oh, why didn't you tell me? If you told me, I would have gone upstairs and tidied your room. Are you hungry? Would you like a glass of tea and a piece of bread? The mistress is out. You better decide quick. I'll have a glass of tea if you like. Well, don't do me any favours. If I like. Not if I like. I've had tea, really. I've never known anyone like you. Cassandra! Where's my tea? It's coming, it's coming. Oh, really? Up and down, up and down. They expect to be waited on hand and foot. And most of them can't even pay their rent on time. At least you don't call me every five minutes. And sugar, too, they want some of them. Where's my sugar? I want a lump of sugar. You bring Alexei Grigorovich a lump of sugar with his tea. Am I less important than Alexei Grigorovich? No, but he pays his rent regularly. Talk to mistress about sugar. There. You better take it quick before the mistress comes back. But you do look thin. You're shrinking before my very eyes. I used to think that room was too small for you. Now it looks too big. Are you sure you don't want some bread? Uh, no, thank you, Nastasia. Nastasia! I'm coming! Not to Mr. Luchin. Not on my account. Not to that gentleman. Not while I'm alive. Yes, that seems fun.
venture on a third to engage you in conversation. For as much as your exterior would not command respect, experience tells me that you are a man of education. I, I have always respected education in conjunction with genuine sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I offer my name? Mama Love, by rank a titular councillor. May I inquire if you have ever been in government service? No, I'm studying. Yeah, a student as I thought, I could see at once a certain intelligence, a certain... Allow, allow me. Poverty is not a vice on it, sir. That's true, isn't it? Eh? Beggary is a vice. And you know why? Because a man has nothing left when he begs. Nothing. And why don't you work, Mama Ladov? Why aren't you at your duty, if you're in the service? <laughs> why am I not at my duty? Humiliation on it, sir. A month ago, Mr. Lebechetnikov, who lives along the corridor from us, gave my wife a beating. And my wife, let me tell you, is a very different matter from me. I, I lay there drunken, unable to prevent him. Why did he beat her? Because she wouldn't put up with his rudeness and made it plain. She is a lady, so I'm, I'm a pig, I don't argue with that. But Katerina Ivanovna, my wife, is a lady. A woman of education, an officer's daughter. She once danced the shawl dance before the governor and other personages and was presented with a gold medal and a certificate of merit. A gold medal? Well, that, that was sold long ago, but the certificate she still has in her trunk. And the other day she showed it to our landlady, a Ger German woman with whom she is on continually bad terms, and I don't condemn her for that because she is a a lady of noble sentiments and education. Yeah. But Katerina Ivanovna is also unjust. She, she's magnanimous, but unjust. She pulls my hair. She, <laughs> well, you think I'm ashamed of that? I deserve it. Beast that I am, I deserve it. <laughs> You know that I have sold her very stockings for drink. Not just her shoes, but her stockings too. And we live in a cold room, and this winter she has been coughing blood, but I sold her stockings for drink. You think I don't feel that? The more I drink, the more I feel it. The more I feel it, the more I drink. It's hopeless. It's hopeless. Do you, do you know that my daughter Sonia has a yellow card? Yeah? Oh, yes, on it, sir. She is a prostitute. Why should I disguise it for you? It's well enough known hereabouts. It certainly is. <laughs> Young man, in your face I seem to read some trouble of mind. I read it when you came in, some deep inner struggle. That's why I spoke to you. I saw that you are a tortured being like myself, and yet a, a man of feeling too. And, and like this riffraff, is. Something troubling you, honestly? Is, is, is it something that you can speak of? 
Yeah. You know, my, my wife scrubs the floors herself and has nothing but black bread to eat, but she is a lady of spirit who is proud. She never forgets that she was educated at a school for the children of noblemen. She was a widow when, when I married her with three small children. And her first husband gambled all the money away. And I was, I was a widower with a, a daughter of 14, and yet she consented to be my wife. Consented, she'd nowhere else to turn. Do you know what it is to have nowhere to turn? You're too young to know you. You're too young to know what it is to have a daughter with a yellow card. We, we live it. It's unspeakable how we live. Do you, do you think a respectable girl can earn much by honest work? Little Sonia worked hard from morning till night, but there were five of them. I, I don't count myself because I deserve nothing, but five of them, and the little ones always hungry and always crying. And, and Katerina Ivanovna is unjust. Oh, she's magnificent, but she is unjust. You see, one day Katerina Ivanovna flew and little Sonia screamed at her. You could earn more if you wanted. You have something so mighty precious to be careful of. You would rather keep it and see us all die. <laughs> No, no, don't blame her, honest sir. Don't blame her. If you knew what that poor consumptive woman had suffered with, with the disease and, and the children always crying, crying, crying. But, but it, 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 it was, you must understand, a, a terrible moment. I saw little Sonia get up. He put a kerchief round her head and a little cape round her shoulders and she went out. And when she came back, it was nine o'clock and she was trembling, but otherwise composed. She walked across the Catherine Nirvana and put 30 rubles down on the table in front of her, and she didn't say a word. She just picked up our big green shawl and wrapped it round her little trembling body, and she lay down on the bed with her face to, to the wall. <laughs> What did she do? What did Katerina Ivanovna do? She knelt, she knelt down by Sonny's bed and she gathered her little feet up to her lips and she kissed them and wept. I kissed them and wept and, and she couldn't get up. In the end, they fell asleep in each other's arms. And I lay drunk on the floor. Uh, of course, they drove right. The, the other tenants they drove little Sonia out, and that was when Katerina Ivanovna flew at Mr. That was Yatnikov because 
he had instigated the complaints against her. She, she was protecting her little Sonia. And that, that's how he came to strike her. Now, Sonia only comes to us after dark. She won't come in the day anymore. She only comes up the dark. Hear, hear the rest, Olive, sir, please, please hear the rest. Because it was then that I exerted myself to save them, to save little Sonia. I, I made a supreme effort. I went to see His Excellency Ivan Afanasyevich, begged him to give me another post. And he did. I, I, I kissed the dust at his feet. I swore my... Lips would never touch, touch liquor again. Can you imagine the effect when I told Katerina Ivanovna? Can, can you imagine the effect on this household? It was shh, shh, Papa is sleeping. Shh, Papa is resting. Katerina Ivanovna was transformed. She was like a young girl again. And when I brought her my first earnings in full, 23 rubles, she wept and called me her little poppet. <laughs> I went to bed the happiest man alive. <laughs> I went to bed the happiest man alive. And in the night I rose from that bed. I stole from Katerina Ivanovna the key of her box. And I took out what was left in my earnings. And I haven't been back since. That was five days ago. Five days! Now, here is irony. Today I approached little Sonia in the street. She gave me 30 kopecks without a word. <laughs> daughter, I had exerted myself to save from the street. <laughs> gave me money from her earnings on the street. <laughs> Not to be pitied. What are you to be pitied for? <laughs> Why am I to be pitied? You're right. I should be crucified, not pitied. Right. It is for man to crucify and God to pity, and he will pity us. He will forgive us all. <laughs> all of us. Me and little Sonia and Katarina and and the children. He will forgive us all. I forgive you all, he will say. You drunken and you weak ones and those without honor among you. And those who have suffered at your hand. I will love to all eternity. And we will fall down before him. And we will weep, weep, weep. <laughs> Come, let me take you home. <laughs> what will we find there? Oh, my wife wasting away, the chil children hungry and crying. But let us go home. Home is where a man should be. I'm afraid to go home. <laughs> Oh, no. That's the way the world is made. 
afraid. If children are bad, they must be punished and then they must cry. Ah! Oh, you've come back. Where's the money? What have you done with it? Where's the money? Monster. Criminal! Where's the money? Tell me! What have you done with it? There were 12 rubles left. You took it all, you thief. You left us hungry while you drank it away. God strike you dead, no, you no, 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 What have you no, done to no, us? No, to the children no, mean nothing no, to you. No, Don't you care, no, you monster no, thief? Where no, is the money? It does not hurt me. It is a consolation to me. It does not hurt me. He's drunk it away. He's drunk it away. And his clothes. Look at him. And the children are hungry. You've been drinking with him. Shame on you. I mean, do you see how he's left us with nothing? Nothing. Go away. Go away. What have you done with the money? Tell me. Go on, tell me what you've done with it. Don't you care? to pick up. The people who are selling used to be well off. My sister doesn't like me to be out of the house at that time. She doesn't like to be left alone. Tell her it's important. Tell her she can make quite a bit of money. And so can you. Will you come? Yes. Yes, I'll come. She won't mind for once. Seven o'clock sharp. If you're late, you'll miss all the best things. Don't worry. I'll be there. At seven. Yes? Thank you. Uh, that's it then, isn't it? Now you know what choice have you. You must act. Oh, no. How else would you have got the information? Why else would you have been given it? Hmm?
you're up again. Are you going out? What's the matter? You look as though you've seen a ghost. I just wondered if there were any more letters. No, no more. Will you be long? Would you like me to clean your room a little? Yes. Good evening, Alonya Ivanovna. I brought something for you. But... No! Go into no. the light, otherwise you won't be able to see. Wait! Who are you? Who said that you could come here? How dare you? You know me, Raskolnikov, the student. I brought you another pledge. What's the matter with you? Why are you looking at me as if you don't know me? Well, if you don't want it, I can easily take it elsewhere. Oh, so you're... Calling again instead of redeeming. What is it? A silver cigarette case. What's the matter with you? Why are you trembling? It's nothing. I fever. I haven't eaten for some time. Silver cigarette case. Doesn't feel like silver. <laughs> Goodness, why has he wrapped it up so? Why has he tied it like this?
up now, you old witch. Open up! Don't you, sir? What's the matter? Well, how should I know? She should be in, but nobody answers. I have business with her. I need some money. So do I. It's odd, though. She told me to come at this time. Now she's out. Oh, she's never out. I don't understand it. Do you see how the door rattles if you shake it? it? That means it's not locked with a key from the outside, but just bolted. Somebody's in there. Perhaps they're both fainted. Shall we break the door down? No, I don't think so. Let's go and fetch the caretaker. He's out in the courtyard. They could both be ill, I suppose. Mm.
were dead. What's the matter with you? Why are you clutching all those things? If you're taking them to the Haymarket, I can tell you you needn't bother. No one would buy them. How do I know? You're too ill to go. He's too ill. You can see that. It's nothing to do with me. I'll go. I think I know what it's about. But you can go now, there's nothing more to do. What do you want? I've been summoned by a, a notice. Here, read that. It's a writ for recovery of money on an IOU. And what time were you told to arrive? Nine o'clock, and it's now twelve. <laughs> Only just received the notice. It's enough that I'm here, ill as I am. Don't shout at me. I'm not shouting. It's you who are shouting. I'm a student. I won't be shouted at. Be quiet. You're in a government office. Don't be impudent. You're in a government office too. And not only are you shouting, but you're smoking. We show you no respect for any office. That is none of your business. Show him the rip. There's a complaint against you. You don't pay your debts. You've got to find one to talk about respect. Sit. It's a writ for recovery of money on an IOU. You must either pay it, give a written declaration when you can pay it, you mustn't leave the capital until it's paid. But I'm not in debt to anyone. You signed an IOU to your landlady. She's discounted it to get her money to Mr. Cheberov. He is presenting it for payment. <laughs> it's no laughing matter. At it again, Ilya Petrovich. Boiling over as usual. I can hear it on the stairs. <laughs> These people are poor. Look at this one. A student dressed in rags. Runs up bills, can't pay his debts. He then has the cheek to reprimand me about smoking in the office. Poverty is not a crime, my friend. Excuse me, but that's not the case. My landlady is a very good friend of mine. In fact, I was going to marry her daughter, but she died of typhoid. We are not interested in your personal life. Oh, come, come, Ilya Petrovich, you're too much. <laughs> Sign here. It's the usual declaration that you'll pay on a certain date and that you won't leave the capital or move your goods until you do. Just put your signature. Now, what is it? Is there something more you want to tell me? Uh, uh, what is it? No, it, 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 it's, it's only that I, I am expecting some money soon from my mother. That's irrelevant. Uh, well, just put it all down here. <laughs> you look ill. It's so hot in here. It's that smell. Ah, oh, that's the new paint. It's a bit sickly, eh, in the heat. <laughs> well, go on. Right. Here, read it. It's their statement. I just left them. How do you explain these contradictions? They say the door was locked when they knocked, but that the porter found it open when they returned. No, the murderer must have been in there all the time. If one of them had stayed at the door instead of both of them going for the porter, oh, they would have been trapped inside and we'd have had it. Quite clearly, he seized on the interval to slip down the stairs. Without being seen and with the others coming up, I can't exactly answer that. And you believe the statement? Yes, I do. If they had done it, I mean, what sense is there in them going to the border? The blind? I don't believe that. 
They'd have been better off just walking through the door. Are you ill? Have you been ill long? Yesterday. Did you go out yesterday? Yes. Though you were ill? Yes. What time did you go out? Where did you go? I went for a walk in the street. <laughs> That's very precise and definite, I must say. Now look, Elvira Petrovich, the man's ill. You have no right Never to mind, never mind. Nam pot, as they say. Well, we won't detain you. I told you to come. A woman was selling stuff off. An hour later and she was dead. Dead. Her head back thin. The old woman, well, that's one thing. But this isn't her. What harm did she ever do anyone? yesterday, I'll warrant. You've been walking all day and you've got a fever. Nastasia. Why were they beating your mistress? Beating her? Who was? I heard them. Assistant Superintendent. Ilya Petrovich. Now beating her on the stairs. It's the blood. What blood? When it gets clotted and has nowhere to go, you begin fancying things. No one's been beating anyone. Oh. Will you eat something? Would you leave, leave me the candle? Well, don't let it burn too long. <laughs> 